So with that, we can just dive right into, oh, let's remember to do our hours. I forgot to do mine again. Are you gonna put the screen up for the QR code? Mm -hmm. It is a little bit later in the presentation. Okay. Awesome. Okay, and you did remember to sign in. Good. All right. So, Kristen, would you like to give us a financial report? Yes, I think it has changed. Um, including the other one that I Alex that is obligated to spend, I am waging a war with them because they charged me a hundred dollars more than we agreed upon. So. It hasn't been paid yet, but it will, but not until they, they make it right. So we're, we are exactly as we haven't. We haven't spent anything that I know of in that 5,000. Mm -hmm. So here we are. All right. Mm -hmm. Funding team report. Yeah, I actually got it with Dr. Lee here. So mm -hmm. he submitted the application to the mm -hmm. Nancy. And the BNRC will review it, go through it, and then um, pretty much give us back a red marked application that we will then rework based on their suggestions. So it's kind of like a, you know, you're publishing an article or something. Um, so it's just our first draft, and we'll get it back and then rework more. And Josh has done the whole of the work on it. So it does the end. All right. Outreach team, are you doing that one? Yeah. Uh, we had a couple of events this past month. Um, we did uh, the Living with Fire and the Bitter on June 15th. Um, we got a couple of home assessment signups from it and got a lot of really good information. Um, we did the Wildfire Preparedness Pint Night on the 21st of June. Uh, we got about seven home assessment signups, reached a lot of folks, passed out a lot of materials, and had a lot of FaceTime with people. We did an educational trivia too. We got 60 people uh, to do the trivia, which was super fun, and passed out some cool pint glasses. And then on the 25th, we did the Learn with a Firefighter Library event for Smokey's ADA Reading Challenge. And what was it, Russ? Was it about 30 kids? Yeah. About 30 kids. I think when we started, there was less, but I then kids just kept yeah. kept on coming in. They kept multiplying. Um, had a really fun time, um, engaged with them quite a lot. They learned a lot and were super, super stoked at the end of it to a point that it was a little bit chaotic, but it was very <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, because of the success of it, we did it at the CVI Library, the North Valley Public Library. We're going to do it again in Darby. Um, coming up next week on the 18th. If anyone's interested in coming along to help out or just to hang out with us while we do the event, it's pretty fun. Um, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. Um, on the 11th, this Thursday, um, me and Judy are going to be doing a presentation at the Women's Newcomers Club and on HIV, landscaping, uh, evacuations whatnot. So that's going to be a good time and get a lot of good information to those folks over there. Um, Can I ask a question about the um, fight night? Mm -hmm. How many assessments did we get out of that? We got seven. And what was the demographic age range of people there? It was a pretty wide range. A lot of it was, there was people in their 20s up to seniors just out for dinner. Um, I'd say the folks that signed up for assessments were mostly in their 50s and 60s, but we did get a couple of young, younger families that signed up um, and also signed up for their relatives. So we got them and also their parents or their... <laughs> like, <laughs> it's been pretty funny setting them up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for, for how low... For how easy the event was to put on, it was a fairly high yield um, in terms of face-to-face -face interaction and talking to people and getting those those signups. Um, Did you have a feel for whether many of the people 
participating and particularly the ones that signed up for assessments were they new to the valley um i would say most of them have been living here for a while there was a definitely a group of young families that were very new though um and there's also a lot of visitors either from missoula or from other parts of montana that were there for the weekend nice but yeah and that uh next meeting on there is incorrect it is uh, the Magruder Room on July 15th at 10 a.m. That's the next meeting. The next For the outreach meeting. team. It is that. Say it again. It's at the Magruder Room at the Bitter uh, okay. National Forest Office on July 15th at 10 a.m. You have sent it something. Yeah, I sent out an email, I think, earlier today. Yeah. And I'll send a reminder as well. Yeah. Um, did you say anything much about living with fire? Yeah, um, we got a three, I think we got three home assessment signups. Uh, the attendance was fairly low. Most of it was the folks that were putting on the events and the agency folks, um, which was too bad. We think it was because it was Father's Day weekend. Um, and a lot of people were doing other things outside with their families rather than learning about hazardous fuels mitigation, which is too bad. And it's it's noted. We will be more aware of holidays in the future. And doing it earlier. Probably. Doing it earlier in the year when people Kids being out of school don't want to recreate in the mushy, gushy springtime rather than the beautiful sunny summertime. And you were at the collaborative meeting last night, a couple of you. Did they talk about that and whether they decided they were going to have another one in Central Valley and then North? Yeah, it's kind of on hold right now. Uh, they were kind of based on the turnout of the Living with Fire and some of the other things that they're trying to work on now. They uh, kind of backed off a little bit, but uh, all if that becomes in fire season, you're just wondering about time to get the presenters and everything. But uh, it could be we get smoke in the air. That might be the yeah. Thing to do it. <laughs> that might be the best attendance ever. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. So who's doing assessment team report? See, I got that one um, for the rest of, of July. Uh, there are 17 assessments on the calendar, 18 as of today, um, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are signing up and people are excited. They're getting the assessments and then immediately they ask for cards to hand out to neighbors and I've been getting a call the next day. So people are spreading the good word and are pretty gung-ho about it, which is really cool to see. There's a lot of enthusiasm. Um, as for an assessment training, um, I know you guys probably got the doodle poll for the training we were thinking about putting on next week. However, me and Kristen were chatting about it and due to the response to the poll, as well as the actual standardized training that's in the works right now, we're thinking it might be a better opportunity to push it off to September. When we have that training, we have that actual toolkit and there's a little more time to plan for people. So there's not super busy in the middle of fire season. People have a little more time and can set aside that day because it's going to be a fairly comprehensive training. For how many hours? From nine to three. So about six hours with a lunch break in between with provided lunch. Yeah. When we did the training last spring, um, it went really well, but actually the one complaint that, or the one complaint that I heard multiple times was they actually wanted more time because it was a little rushed, right? So um, that's we actually added a little more time to it to mm -hmm. do a better job. Once you're in the training, it's you see how that field portion is actually really helpful, and then you don't want that rush. So, and one question I have is this just training for? Um, Agency people, or no, we send them. Yeah, LSP anyone who wants to learn to anyone to do that doodle poll, and mm -hmm. that was part of it. We had a handful, like three right. people, that weren't 
teaching it or you know helping to run it sign up and so, right and it's just a hard time of the year mm -hmm. right it's we know that but we tried and honestly we've been busy and that it probably couldn't have happened earlier with all the events that we've been doing and Ella coming online right the, the, she's you're totally capable of teaching it now, but she wouldn't have been, you know, right. not been to starting. Right. So. And I know that next week, I don't need it. I would say that. Yeah. 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 Anything else on that? I don't think so. Um, just stay tuned. Uh, we're picking dates and setting that more in stone, um, looking out for those emails if you're interested in doing that assessment training. It's for everybody, it's not just for agency, it's not just for those of you who want to do it independently. If you just want to do the training so you have a greater grasp of that HIZ and how to deliver that information to homeowners, it's a really great training to do. Yeah, that's what I got. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, speaking of assessments, I put uh, an assessment sign out at the end of my driveway when we the day that we did that workshop so people would see that and think, oh, that's probably the place before they see the, the number on the address. And I haven't taken it down yet. And we had a 4th of July party with 50 people and a lot of people asked me what that's all about. Oh, wow. So, Oh, I'm yeah. thinking I'll leave it up. Yeah. Because our neighborhood is getting to be a scary place. Yeah. We had a fire this about a week ago, burned about an acre. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully, it was during the day, and some neighbors saw the smoke and called other neighbors, and the fire department burned about an acre and got up into trees, even though the trees were. Um, they didn't have ladder fuel really low, but the grass was so hot, grass fire, it just climbed right up the bark. Yeah. The radiation of the fire. Right. Yeah, which I happened to do some personal education today to the homeowner, asking him how he puts his fires out because he doesn't use water. And I said, you don't plan on doing any more burning this summer, right? And he said, oh, no, I wouldn't think of it. So. Our neighbors. Yeah. So neighbors came with running with shovels and we had one neighbor with a tractor and it was a bit of a panic. Yeah. So we can all do personal education, too. <laughs> well, and burning is going to be closed as a fast. Yeah. Not that everybody pays attention to the law, but hopefully it's repeated a lot on the radio. I did hear it today on the radio about uh, prevention. We haven't, we haven't run any. This was actually the first year that we haven't run um, prevention ads down here already a lot of yeah, I don't know who's bad down. it was. I think it right. was the same heard the same ad. Oh is it, but is it smoke? Because it could be it's wildfire smoke ready week and and no, usually they didn't talk out. about smoke. They talked about prevention and the weather and so you didn't catch it either, Russ, whose ad it was? No, I didn't catch you that. I didn't either. It was well done. Yes. Is that bias in Montana? They do they have some TV ads that they run every every year on the TV. I haven't heard the radio, but it comes to hmm. Yeah, well, it was a good ad and very timely good. talking about the weather. Yeah. And how it's prime for danger. Yes, and an open country store last year. It's closing this Saturday. Or not. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I have water. <laughs> well, our neighbor also had a hose, but he went in and took a nap and his hose burned up before <laughs> he knew it was happening. Oh, man. 
So Buffalo's life has been getting hotter and hotter. Yeah. It looks like it's 100 degrees out there right now. Yeah. Yeah. 120 yeah. in my phone. 97, I just checked. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> oh, everybody knows. Everybody knows there's climate change. What everybody doesn't agree on is the cause. Well, thank you for that. Yes. Yeah, thank you for that. So okay. Howie is moving to hot fire danger tomorrow as well. Our embassies are cruising up. So, mm -hmm. do we know if the Forest Service here in the valley is? Yes, yeah. um, the news release is ready. I will probably put it out at 8 30 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh, you guys can still be able to move his little friend's body. Good. <laughs> we'll be in charge of that. And it takes two days to come back. Still, by that time, I'm sorry. Good. We'll get into like five more. It's good that it is. Okay, so we can talk about the Qualtrics and tracking hours. Has anybody talked to Kimberly lately to see? I mean, some people weren't able to get in. Laura, were you ever able to get yeah, in? My only problem is that it's easier. I can't remember which months I already did it for, and it doesn't let you check that and see. So I made a right. double entry in some months. I mean, yeah, that's my problem. I haven't done any hours for a few months and now I can't go back. Oh, yeah, so, you can go back and just do it, but you can't tell them you've done it before. Yeah, you totally can do it for any month. Yeah. It's just you don't see, it doesn't give you like a title or a Right. So I that see. would be something like that she could do. That well, would she, be so that if you put your name in on May, it would say this is what's already there. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was, I was, my name is in May. I didn't remember if I'd done it. Yeah. Right. And she also said that she, that she checked it and it looks like it's all tracking accurately. So if you're interested in seeing a printed report. We can reach out to Kevin. That would be yeah. helpful. Are they on as well right now? Yes. Why are they not showing? Hmm? Why are they not showing? Yeah. That was Kimberly and who? Oh, up in the corner. I think yeah. it's just not right. Yeah. yeah. So who do we have? That's cool. Hmm? So we got Royalene. We've got oh, Roy Lee. Kent, so. Kimberly, Mary Anderson, Royalene, and yeah. Okay. Great. Four. It includes me. Okay, we missed them on the introductions. Sorry about that. Okay, we have some new business. Laura Jackson would like to make an announcement about an event coming up. Is it? Do you have that slide? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is a very you know, preliminary slide. It's not till September 6th. Might have to leave it in here, but um, it is going to be a free presentation at the PAC. And um, Steve Running is going to discuss you know, what the science is that he's followed and why he's convinced. There was already a title, is it on this slide? It's Climate Change Hopes for Science. This is a little friendly, right? Yeah, but no, obviously he has a background. He's a scientist, and um, he'll talk about what you know the science is. He's a pretty good speaker, and he's just an interesting man given his background. Um, he's retired now. So that would be almost if we want to put it on the calendar. If we have an August meeting, I will bring some little mini flyers to the cake on the refrigerator. Um, we have a attending we put it off for each of Labor Day, but we could have an application. Yeah, an outreach event basically to run through his work and what he's seen. And then there will be a question and answer period, and people are welcome to encourage the engage. 
Okay. We yeah. could also put it on our newsletter for next month. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Any anybody who might love to be interested, I think his his information is solid for what it is. Okay. And now we have Mary Anderson doing her presentation. Are you ready, Mary? I am. Let me just share my screen. Um, I and I, I want to make sure that I am um, respecting your time today. So I have a little PowerPoint that I'm going to go through um, really what my grant is about and what my job is about and um, some health um, concerns that, that come along with wildfire smoke. Um, but if I'm going over things that you guys already know, uh, go ahead and, and just push me along. Um, but I'll go ahead and share my screen with the PowerPoint now. There we go. Okay, can you guys see that? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, like I said, I am part of wild, uh, the Wildfire Smoke Preparedness um, Grant that came out of the EPA. They actually gave this grant to nine different sites in um, throughout the nation, and we are doing um, a pilot program. What they did was picked areas from um, LA and from tribal communities and from Montana. And they just tried to pick different um, groups uh, to try to see what would work as far as wildfire smoke preparedness. We do a lot of work around um, wildfire preparedness, uh, but what we're seeing is they're, they're, we're getting so many um, um, people are being affected so much from the wildfire smoke and the smoke is getting to be a longer season. And, um, even if you're not affected by the wildfires themselves, that they wanted to do some work around that and help us to start creating some toolkits. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about that today. So um, I talked a little bit about why DPHHS applied for the grant. As you know, we're health and human services, but our chronic populations are growing in Montana right now. About 65% um, of the state is considered overweight and 60% has at least one chronic disease. And that is who's affected by wildfire smoke. So we applied for this grant, hoping that we could do some education around that. Um, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the current recommendations and then I'll get into the grant itself. So a lot of these statistics and a lot of this information came from Climate Smart in Missoula. So you may have seen some of these, um, but one of the things, one of the reasons we got the grant was because although Montana is the fourth um, smallest in population state, um, we're actually, Missoula County was ranked ninth as far as being most polluted um, air quality. And that really comes from just two periods of the year, wildfire smoke season and then in winter when there's an inversion. Um, but those times that the, the air is so congested that we're, we're actually way up in pollution. Um, Lewis and Clark, Revali and Lincoln counties um, were also last year among the 25 most polluted in short-term particle air, um, That well, I guess in 2021. Now average, we burn about 470,000 acres in Montana. Um, the last three years, we haven't even burned that much at all. Um, but they think this year we're going to be back up to our average. Um, but we've had we've had three years respite. And so um, they're really expecting this year to be bigger. This is grant. This information also came from Climate Smart. Um, and this was a study um, done just and this is climate change. So you guys are I'm preaching to the choir here. Um, but what they're seeing is the wildfire smoke, the smoke risk forecast. So where the winds are coming from, what's going to happen on the West Coast, what's happening in Alaska um, and Canada. Um, what they're seeing is that our wildfire smoke days are going to be getting worse. 
And so if you look um, from 2004 to 2009, you can see what our index was. The prediction um, is that it, we're gonna be in the red in the highest um, um, smoke um, um, concentration in the next 10 to 20 years. And so what they wanna do is us to figure out what are we gonna do with our populations? How do we, how do we protect our indoor air? Um, and how do we help people understand um, about the dangers of outdoor air? This is a, a, a nice slide because it shows you how small the particles are in wildfire smoke. And this is the problem. So if you look at the fine beach sand in the left-hand corner, that is how, uh, that's how big sand is compared to the red dot, which is the particulate matter in smoke. Even dust and pollen you can see um, is um, four times the size of the particulate matter. And what happens is even with most dust and sand or anything else, um, when, we, when we breathe that in, it gets caught in our throat or our nose or in our eyes, and we may feel terrible, um, but it's not getting down into the lungs. But that particulate matter is so small that it, get, it embeds itself in our lungs. And so that's what causes problems. Um, and so you'll see in a little bit, you'll see the different ranges for um, outdoor air, who it's dangerous for. The reason it's more dangerous for sensitive populations is they just don't have the capacity um, to, to, start, to get through that. But even in those unhealthy times when it's when it's unhealthy for everybody if that's over an extended period of time and we're breathing in that in that um, particulate matter it's going to start affecting us because we can't get it out of our lungs and so that's what we're worried about what we're finding is the longer that that time is if we're going two weeks and we're in um, unhealthy air um, that the more of that gets indoors because you can see how small it is that's just coming in our house and so there are times when the indoor air is actually two to nine times worse than the outdoor air if we aren't taking measures to clean our indoor air. And so that's where it, it's harder. Um, so health impacts, everybody knows that, you know, you're coughing, sneezing, your eyes itch during that time. Um, what's what they're finding is that there's lower birth rate babies, um, weight babies, if the mom has been exposed to um, indoor, um, or I'm sorry, low air quality. Um, obviously a higher risk of cancer just with that embedding um, the, the particles in your lungs. Montana is actually the highest in morbidity attributed to wildfire smoke um, compared, uh, um, and then our most vulnerable populations, which in Montana are growing, um, but those are um, low-income individuals who just don't have access to air conditioning. They have to have their 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 windows open, or they don't have access to um, a clean air filter, um, or they don't change their filters. Um, there's just a lot of there's a lot of variables that. Um, affect low-income individuals more. P persons with chronic lung or heart disease, senior citizens. I was talking to um, Je Jeff today um, from your emergency management team, and he said your population, um, like the rest of Montana, that there's, there's a higher population of senior citizens. And so that makes it hard. They just don't, they don't have the capacity anymore. And then children, unpregnant individuals. You can see in the graphic the the um, particulate matter. So if you even look at the moderate um, area for particulate matter, our wildfire smoke risk goes up a lot for those high populations. And diabetes is one that it takes a little bit to understand, but actually with kids now, they're finding that the emergency room visits, there's more with overweight kids than there are even from asthma. Um, and so just it, so that diabetes, if it's type two or if it's somebody who's overweight, they're really struggling in our in our winter or in, in our wildfire smoke season. Um, why is it important to talk about indoor air? Because people spend 90% of their time indoors. And like I said, the more that smoke is concentrated in your area, the more smoke that's getting into your house. 
Um, a lot of times people without air conditioning, you know, at night, I, I'm sure um, many of you do this too at night, we open our windows to cool down our house. Um, and I have air conditioning and still we do that. Um, so, so you think if, if that's your only option, we tell people if it's between heat and clean air, cool down your house. And so that just brings in more of those particulate matters. Preparing for wildfire smoke season. Many of you have seen these graphs before. Um, there's two websites that I wanted to point out if you haven't. The first is Montana's Today's Air, and you can just put in Montana Today's Air, and it'll bring up that graphic on the left. Now, that graphic um, shows not only the air um, quality at that time uh, for your area. So I brought up Hamilton. This, is, this was July 2nd. Um, but it also will show you what you can do, what, what populations um, will be affected um, and, and what your activity level can be. I like this graph too, because if you look to the, um, that, that second um, window there, it shows you how the air quality changes throughout the day. So this is important when you're giving that information out to other people, uh, you know, tell them that if you're like me and you have to work out every day, work out in the morning. That's when the, the air is, the quality is going to be cleanest. It, it really does follow a cycle. Um, so you can show people your air quality is not the same throughout the day. In fact, I took this one on July 2nd. And when I was preparing for this, I went back um, and got a history on the fire.airnow.gov. So this is the graphic on the right. And you can see later in the afternoon, this could have been that fire at your house or next to your house. Um, you can see where the air quality went into the red. It was only for like a half hour, but it went into the red and then came down. Now, what is going to be important for you to let your um, the public know is that the air quality standard for yellow for sensitive um, populations, that is going to be more this year. I'm just going to tell you that you can see that every uh, almost every day you guys were in the yellow a little bit. Here's what happened. The EPA has gone back and looked at that sensitive population and they said this the air quality really does affect people more than we know. Um, we're seeing higher emergency room visits. So they actually opened that yellow window up. So it used to be you had to have a particular matter um, number of 12. Now it's nine. So the, the numbers didn't change. It still says zero to 50 is good. 51 to 100 is um, the next level. I don't have my glasses on. Um, but that 51 to 100 is really a broader window because they've lowered that particulate matter to get into that area. So it, as people are saying, oh my gosh, Raleigh County has so many more yellow days. What's going on? That's part of it. You could be at 52 and last year you would have been in the good range and now you're not, now you're in yellow. So that's what's happened. Um, recommendations for clean indoor air. I told that I, Ella that I would just go through some of these in case you haven't heard it. You guys do a, a great job with um, wildfires, um, but just for this information, if you need it. Um, the most important thing you can tell people, okay, I'm at 12 minutes. Um, the most important thing you can tell people is to change your air filter regularly. And the higher the air filter they can do in the in the summer, the better. Now, my husband's an HVAC and he gets really, really upset when I start talking about going to MERV 16, um, but go to MERV 13 until wildfire season is over and then bring it back down. But it's important to make sure that the filter in your house is changed. Um, reduce the sources of indoor air pollution. Those are things like vacuuming. Don't vacuum during wildfire smoke season. It's just kicking all of that up. Um, instead of dusting, make sure you're wet mopping or, or um, dusting with a wet, uh, wet cloth to trap those particles. Cooking is really, really bad during indoor air. Don't use aerosols um, or candles. Those are things that we can do to keep that indoor air clean. And those are things that all of us can do. Keeping windows and doors closed and then an air cleaner, which I'll talk about a little bit more. 
And you're a lot of time. Over. I'm We've sorry. Got, you're good to go a couple minutes over. We've got the time. Okay. Okay. I don't feel like you have to rush. This is important information. Okay. And if, and if any of you, I'll give my contact information at the end, if you want to reach out to me, or if you want some of these, this information in a better form, just, uh, I'll give it to you. Um, one of the things that has happened is people will say, I can't, I don't have enough air filters for my whole house. And so they're really recommending now, if it's a, if it's a longer period of time that you're in indoor um, air, um, um, unhealthy situation do one do one room just put everybody have everybody sleep in the same room because nighttime is when we're breathing the deepest um, and you can put in an air cleaner in that room um, but also you know have it a room that's away a little bit from doors and windows um, try to filter that air as best as you can one of the things that I talked to Ella about was that um, it, it, a lot of communities now are doing do-it-yourself air cleaner um, um, nights. So they're, they'll they'll tell, teach people how to take a box fan and take a filter because they may not be able to afford an air cleaner. Take a box fan and a filter and they show them how to put those together and they can make their own indoor air cleaner. So if they have a fan, you can you can help yourself with that. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, I have the Northwest um, Energy rebate up. That rebate was actually supposed to be used up by June 30th, but they have extended that. So um, right now you can get a $100 rebate toward your, or, or after you buy a filter, they will send you a $100 rebate for those. Um, and they're gonna, they're honoring that right now through the end of August to get through wildfire smoke season. So my son plays football at Montana Tech, and I always worry in the during football season. And so I'm buying him a clean indoor air filter for or a cleaner for his house during Amazon Prime days. They're like $129, so it's going to cost me $29 after I fill out that uh, that rebate form, and I can get that link to you as well. Now that is just for Northwest Energy customers, though, isn't it, or is it? I'm assuming. I would assume that as well. So this is how little I know about Ravalli County. I did not know there was another utility company besides Northwestern Energy in Montana. So yeah. 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 Or Ravalli. Ravalli. Is there oh, sure. Northwestern? Is yeah. It's just if you're close to 93, you're on Northwestern. The more rural areas are Okay, so there is some Northwestern. Yep. Okay. Right. Right. Lots of lots of places well, have either yeah, right. Valley Electric Co-op or Missoula Electric Co-op, but they have Northwestern Energy for their gas supply. Oh, so that's that's true in the north part of the valley in Florence. So some are Missoula Electric Co-op, some are Valley Electric Co-op for electricity but Northwestern Energy for gas. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of rebates. If if you're Northwestern Energy at all, if you look at that list, there's a ton, but that $100 off an air cleaner, really, you've got the price down to $29, you know? So it's it's worth it if you're looking at a clean, I'm, I'm just getting one for my son's room, you know? So when he sleeps at night, I know he's getting clean air during fall ball, so. Okay, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the grant. There's uh, there's three areas in the grant that we said we would, um, these are our goals for our grant. Um, and the first one is the community outreach. Um, now, we are working with three counties or two counties at a time. So this first year, um, we, we got started really late. We did not get the money until the middle of May. And so our first year, we're, it, it's kind of a planning year. We're going to do as much training as we can. We're going to do as much work as we can. Um, but our first counties were Missoula County and Ravalli County uh, because we knew there was already work happening in those areas around wildfires. And so we um, we wanted to start with some counties that, that had a little bit of background. Um, but, and we needed counties that, that 
obviously have more smoke. Um, and so um, the first, our first efforts, of course, are training. So um, broadcasting smoke awareness uh, messages. We are also in the middle of wildfire smoke preparedness week. So I, I put together um, social media messages for our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages um, for this week. Um, and, and kind of along with Climate Smart. Climate Smart has different events this year for wildfire smoke preparedness or this week. Saturday, I'll be going over to Missoula for their farmer's market to help. They're gonna do the do-it-yourself air cleaners. Um, they're, and then they're gonna give a little bit more information about wildfire smoke indoor air preparedness as well. So, um, so that's our first training. Um, we are also in the middle of creating a smoke readiness toolkit, and I talked a little bit uh, about that earlier today, uh, and really my idea for a toolkit was to make sure we had one for your house, for you as an individual, one for the community as a whole, so what information can wildfire in the root get out to people, um, one for buildings, and then one for schools. So in those, they'll have templates. You know, what information are you sending home? What are you giving to teachers? What information can you give out as a press release? Um, so we'll have templates in there. And then also all of the different, we'll have a checklist for buildings. We'll have a checklist for your house. And then just any of the videos or information we can put together. So we're working on that right now, and we're hoping that'll be ready by December. If you have ideas for that, please let me know. Um, we're looking for organizations to, to partner with for do-it-yourself air filters. Like I said, Climate Smart was already doing that. If you guys um, would like to do this at one of your events, um, we can certainly help with that. I know that that you guys may have the opportunity to get some filters that may be an that may be something that you could do in conjunction with some of your other trainings, uh, but they really do work. They they work and and it's a cheaper brand for it's a cheaper way for people to get clean air, especially if you need it for a room in a big smoke event. For these workshops, do you come with a whole bunch of box fans and filters and then give that to the people or like you just show them how to do it so that they can go do it at home we show them how to do it now we are the part of our contract is with climate smart in missoula and then missoula county so i'm guessing that it, that I could come down, but I'm guessing that they may help with that unless you guys wanted to take that on or if there was a community group that wanted to take that on and do it at your farmer's market or at, I love the idea of going to the brewery. I told Ella, I go, gosh, I want, I kept asking my boss, can I go to breweries? And he's like, no. So, um, but yeah, if there were places that you wanted to do that or at the library, it's kind of, a, this is a school where the kids did it. The kids did it for their families. So we don't, I'll show you what we have monies for, um, but we do not have the money for those box fans. It would be teaching people how to do that. Well, and then we would- have you talked with Bitterroot Climate Action Group in the Bitterroot because that, they're an excellent partner and actually they were the pioneers in our the filter program. We just got you know what here. Yeah. They are the ones who told me to talk to. I talked to Peter. Peter and uh -huh. I met last week. And so, and I know they have a lot of, they're in the middle of a lot of initiatives right now. And he's like, I'm not sure how much bandwidth we have. Um, so he um, invited me to talk to you. And really today is just getting this information out. We have an entire year. Um, and this is just to see if any of you are interested in, in helping with these efforts. So there is no, there's no obligation here. We want to make sure you know what we're doing and what resources we can provide. No, so, I love that. I, just, I wanted to make sure BCAG was not left out. <laughs> so. No, we. I talked to Peter first, and he gave me your name, and he gave me the emergency management system. He was very, very helpful. Um, but he, and wanted to stay informed, but was just trying to be pretty protective of his members because they have some other things going on right now. Oh, cool. So. No, that sounds great. 
The other thing that we are, want to provide is technical training. So there are some recommendations. There's some easy. There's some easy checklist things that that commercial buildings and that public spaces can be doing, uh, it, and they just may not know about that. Uh, so we um, have monies to bring in a trainer to talk to your maintenance people with your schools, with your senior citizen centers, with. Um, anyone really who wants to come, anyone in HVAC, to talk to them about what are the steps you take before, you know, you find out there's there's a chance for a wildfire smoke or we're entering that season. What are some checks do you want to do before it gets into the smoke? What are 10 things that you need to make? You know, what do you have to do with your system? Making sure those filters are, are cleaned, making sure you know how to uh, manage the the air that's coming in from outdoors to try to shut that off so you have more indoor air circulating instead. So we talk about those steps and would bring someone in um, and they would do assessments in your building. So here's some things that you want to take care of. Um, we would also, uh, we're also creating a checklist, a clean air, indoor air recognition checklist. So if you wanted your business or if you wanted your community center to be a clean indoor air recognized place for people to go, um, there's a checklist for that that we are developing right now that we, Ravalli County, you're going to be one of our test sites for that. Um, but if people wanted to be a part of that committee, uh, that's another place where we could really use um, some expertise and some guidance. Uh, I talked about my husband a little bit earlier being in HVAC, and so he's looking through those materials as an HVAC worker saying, what is, this is possible, you you could ask somebody to do this, this, you'd have to have a designated person on site all the time. So um, it's nice, we would like to have a good, better and best um, situation, what they ask for is that they know that you can't keep indoor air completely clean, but if you can get it at 20% of the outdoor um, levels, you can keep it at a more healthy level. And the last thing, this is what this is where Rivali County will come in. Our clean indoor recognition program, we are looking for sites in each of our counties that would like to serve as clean indoor air spaces for people who don't have access to clean indoor air. They don't have air conditioning, they can't afford a cleaner, or maybe they're older and can't manage that on their own. Um, but places where they can go that they can cool off, where they can get clean air and get out of the smoke. Um, and so what our grant has um, put monies in for is three locations in each county that would be willing, three public spaces that would be willing to serve as clean indoor air um, shelters during bad smoke seasons. So um, within the next year, we'd like to find three locations in the county, maybe spread those out, Darby, Stevensville, Hamilton, so everyone has an area that was close. Um, and then with that train, if, if, if somebody wanted to have their site be a, the, a site, then we would provide the training for them. Each site would get a HEPA air cleaner up to $1,000. So, um, so that's a pretty big unit, actually. An indoor air monitor. And when I say this, people are like, oh my God, are you guys going to be waiting to see if our air quality, if we're not doing what we're supposed to do? And the indoor air monitor is only for you to know when your indoor air is getting dirty. So we aren't going to have any access to that information, but you'll have it on your wall and you can see when it goes into the unhealthy range and you bring out your clean indoor air um, toolkit and you follow the steps in the clean indoor air toolkit to get your air back in the healthy ranges. Um, and then the last thing, every site will get $1,000. That's for anything like hiring your training or your H an HVAC person to come in to take care of work or ordering more filters when this grant is up, whatever you want to use that money for, um, that money would be there for each site who was willing to take this on. So if you are interested in this, um, one of the things I'd say is just is just spread the word that this grant is out there, that this grant is for Rivali County in the next year, um, um, let me or any of us come to your community meetings, 
maybe suggest possible sites both for trainings and for the clean indoor air shelters. Um, and then maybe host or attend a training if your group wanted to do that. So that was fast and furious, um, but I can take any questions. I have a question about your printed resource materials for handing out to the public. For example, you're going to go to the farmer's market and you're going to do a demonstration. Will you have handouts so that people who are there can give those to somebody else and they know exactly what to do so that it's um, continuing to educate after the first person is informed? Yes, those materials are actually, they're already available on our website, but we would have, we would have handouts. And then we'd also, in our toolkit, part of that toolkit is those, um, those handouts. And it's even things Ella and I had talked about. I have a obviously more extensive list of, of how to keep your clean indoor or your air indoor clean. Um, and it's even things like take your shoes off outside. When you come inside, take a shower and get your clothes in the washer right away because everything has that particulate matter on it. So what we try to do is make sure everybody knows there are steps you can take to keep your indoor or your air clean. But yes, we would have those handouts available. Well, I can see our council doing events where we can add your materials to our materials. Yeah, I would love that. And just have a box then set up like that we would result, just have it set up and a little how to bookmark mm -hmm. and it to people, hey, you can do this at home. So yeah. Yeah. No, I would be happy to send that. And there's even, there's really good videos too online about how to do it if you're not home, but but there is step-by-step -step directions. Um I I I could send it out to you um tonight. So, um, yeah, we've got some really good materials for the box fans and then just other ideas for clean indoor air. So that's something we could consider putting on our, a link on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. that add to the website yeah. and even add some checklist items like that when you do home assessments. It's just a part of the whole thing. It's right. Yeah. Here's our keeping the outside. Here's our smoke. Are you prepared yeah. to off our smoke? Yeah. Uh, is yeah. your house defensible? Are you ready to evacuate? Are you ready to deal with wildfire smoke? It's like all the elements of it yep. can be part of those handouts. Yeah. But we do have a magnet that we did last year. With I, I do put the magnet. Our the the yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we do, and I think it has the today's air for Montana mm -hmm. wildfire smoke dot org. I can't remember which one. So yeah. Um, that's a great. Yeah. Yeah. They get to and the I like you'll, you'll get the information either way. Yeah, I and I love that website because it really does put the power in in your hands of, of being able to say, okay, you need to go outside. Here's the healthiest times to do that. Here's how you can keep your house safe. Um, those those um, air quality monitors, um, we use purple and those are, you can get them for less than a hundred dollars. So you can have it outside your house. You could have it inside your house. Um, um, but those are, those are really valuable. Uh, and, and it's just a way for you to kind of take, to be able, when you feel like the, you don't have any control over anything, here's something you have control over, you know, are you making sure your windows are sealed? Are you making sure your doors are sealed? You know, um, are you not using aerosols during that time, not burning candles, some some things that anyone can do um, to help protect themselves. Okay. Mary, I have a question. One thing, okay. that, one thing that wasn't hit on, when people let their pets outside and they bring them back in the house, they should be brushed off. Um, okay. And that makes a big difference too, because they'll carry a ton of smoke in on their coats. Wow. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you very well. Could you, could someone repeat that who's closer to the microphone? Yeah, he was wondering about, or he was making a point of when your dogs come back in from outside, brushing them off to get the particulate matter off of them. Is that a point that you 
add in those handouts? I certainly can. We're actually developing. I sent um, Ella a bunch that were not Montana ones. Um, and I was like, we need to update these. So they're, they've got our logo instead of California and Oregon. Um, and that's certainly something that I can put on them. And I appreciate that suggestion. Thank you. And a lot of our air quality issues in the summer are not just smoke related, but we have a lot of dirt roads and without any precipitation, the roads are very dry and you see people drive down the road and there's just a cloud of smoke. So we have a lot of particulate matter from dust from the yeah. road. The has when I change the cabin, there's a lot of time, and that helps a lot. Hmm. Same job about Send your dashboard or under your dashboard. I have to find out if I have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we uh, get, well, and we've got the pollen too. So we've kind of got a triple threat, but. Right. But those indoor air cleaners really do make a difference. And changing your filter, changing your filter, you know, every three months or right. after a wildfire smoke event, change it right away. Yeah, right. which we are probably going to get more smoke from Washington. The air pattern is like it's already kind of hazy, especially. Mm -hmm. It's very right hazy now. already. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's coming. So thank you, Washington. Yes. Well, thank you for your presentation, and we will uh, look into getting some links on our uh, Facebook page. Okay. okay, and any help I can give you, Ella has my contact information, um, but anything you need, um, just let me know. I'm learning. Uh, I'm three weeks in. I was a sexual assault kid initiative trainer um, a month ago. So I'm still learning as well. So if you guys, um, but if you need any information, I'm happy to go research that. That's my job. So I, and I'll get some more information to you, um, shortly. And you're out of Helena. I'm out of Helena. Okay. Well, and for the safe, uh, safe site, the safe air or cleaning air sites, like that's something that we can work on too, is, is you know, asking around or seeing if we can find some sites for you too. So I would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. Yeah, we really, we would like to serve those vulnerable populations, but really it's a matter of just being able to say, hey, in Hamilton, there is a site. You know, if you look at those bigger cities, there's a number you call, you know, you call yeah. 2211 or 221 and you get, um, they tell you where the sites are that you can go. And we're just, Montana just doesn't have that. You know, we just don't have the population, but it's going to get more and more important as our, as our population ages, as um, we get more days of wildfire smoke, we're going to need those. Our, our people are going to need them or they're going to be in the emergency room. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. You guys have a good night. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. We talked last meeting and the meeting before about doing a little activity to start discussing some priorities on projects, what we think um, people might be interested in pursuing. Yeah. So you guys have been thinking really, really hard on this, right? Whole past month. Um, okay. Can I do a go back on what Mary was talking about? Pardon? Can I just do a go back on mm -hmm. what Mary was talking about? Like clean air Because I, I think that is a way that we could really help. So maybe if you have ideas, email them to Ella. I'm thinking like library or nursing homes or care centers. Right, that it would they would benefit from having mm -hmm. that really nice air purifier in the system for schools, but it's just harder for schools in the summer because they're not readily yeah. 
But it sounded like she was talking about a community center where people can go. It is. So, and what senior is going to hop in their car and go miles to a place right. and sit there all day in a chair like this to have clean air? Right. I don't see that happening. So what if we, like, I, I think it probably could be a care center or a nursing home that offered up to be a public space. Or daycare. So that, right, or something like that. So, like, just put your thinking caps on or ask them out too, I'd say, because that's. So, the senior center, I don't for, I mean, Yeah. Like, yeah. Because they've got an open space for communities mm -hmm. like this. And that could be a community place. And seniors might be willing. And they'll go there for lunch and stay a few hours, right. but they're not going to stay there all day. And certainly it wouldn't be open at night when we're. Well, like I, think that that's, would be I think that's an aspect of it. If they're volunteering to be part of that site, if they're volunteering to be a place people can access yeah. 24 hours in these. So I think the main part of it too is in those bad air quality events. So it's not something they'd be going to every day in the summer. It's when there's a close fire or something that's putting out a ton of particulates. And for four days in a row, the air is really, really, really bad. And yeah. it's worth it for them to go to that place with that HVAC and bring a book and hang out there so that yeah. they're not. You gotta remember that, that building thing. that they show it is good for about 1,200 people. Mm -hmm. Right, not very. That's a small yeah. house or a big room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they don't have a lot of grant money to do a lot. They have a little bit of money. Well, I think that $1,000 filter. Yeah, like that will help. Right. Yeah, that will help, and then they get a thousand dollars. So creating that safe space does help. But like you're right; like they don't have money to give us or do filters mm -hmm. to buy the purifiers and, and give out that way. But setting up those sites could be really beneficial. Um, and just as to I think one thing we don't realize is when you have people in your town, but the people who are really affected, they'll go. Yeah, spend the day so right. because if the difference for them between you know gasping for breath and sort of having a civilized day, yeah, right. we don't see that level of smoke. Obviously, you know, I, you know, I, like I said, I don't, you know, I don't pay attention, but I have these two friends who pay a lot of attention, mm -hmm. and they do have a little bit because she bought the program, but I think they're. There is a community, a demographic out there who actually, and the senior center seems like a good location. It's fairly central on that. It's already a group that know they're vulnerable because they're having trouble breathing no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, are there similar, does like Darby have any sort of senior center or community center? Club of with the library? The library there, there is, but there's also a community clubhouse. So the club of the library. Yeah. Okay. And then Stevensville? There's the library, is there a community center or a. Well, the fair. Got the Farmer State Bank building. Fair right. Okay, rent that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if they would be wet. The counter's not going to fall Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they're gonna want to take money off of that. Yeah, they'd have to probably cancel events in order to do that. Yeah, because they're booked. Okay. Well, I do think of things. Maybe email them to to Ella so she can pass them on to yeah to Mary. But I think that's a, a really good way to help it. And then maybe getting some. Would you guys be up for, for purchasing a couple of box fans and having and filters? And then we have those as just another, you know, uh, item that we put at our tables whenever we're either doing a fair or we have that coming up. Then we'll be doing apple Um, But have it out. Yeah, yeah. that's that's easy enough because we do have volunteers there anyway. Right. So yeah. it's just one more thing to talk about. Yeah, and then when school stuff starts up, that can be an element of 
some school programming we do is right. teaching kids how to do it in the classroom. Yeah. And bring it home. Like she said, that that photo was from. Yeah. It'd be cool. It'd be it cool. Even do a library program. Yeah. And do a little that for grown ups. Yeah. The, like city and maybe. So. Or it's a family event that they yeah, come and do with the kids and the parents. Right. So the kids kind of get to do some sort of hands on thing, but it's during the summertime. So. So yeah. is this part, is this the way we're doing our exercise? No, no okay. we're we're exercise. Okay. We got that. We're all okay. <laughs> it's 808. <laughs> we so, need to get going. For what we're doing, um, I reviewed it, so it's not going to take uh, the, the whole time. But everybody take a piece of paper and a pen, write on the piece of paper and legibly and concisely as you can. A big bold okay. idea for the council for business. Okay. Now it needs to be somewhat realistic because ideally this is something that we could do. But don't like think about money, but not so much that you're like, oh, it's probably so expensive. I won't. I, you know, we we probably need to because. We possibly could, right? There's CWD funds, there's grants out there. So, they almost the guys the limit. What would you like to see the council do? And don't think so much on limitations of capacity either. Okay. So, if this, if you had, lots of people could probably do it. A pretty good size pot of money. What would you want to see the council do? So write that down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to don't put your name on it. And we're going to do some exchanging of ideas. And you'll see. So we're going to write these down. And then we're going to pass them around for a minute. You're not going to read them. You're just going to walk around and pass the cards. From, from person to person, not reading. At the end of a minute, whatever card you have in your hand, you're going to read. And then on the back of that card, you're going to rate it from one to five. And this is all up here too, and I'll go through it as we do it too, so you don't have to memorize the steps. But you're going to rate it from one to five, where one is not the greatest idea, and five is that is awesome. I so want to do. Okay, then we're going to do the exchange again. Walk around, hand them off, not read them, and then one minute goes by. You're going to stop, read what you have in your hand, rate it, and then we're going to do it one more time. Okay, and then those with the highest scores, we're gonna we're gonna read. And we're going to talk, and it will help us make a wish list, which sometimes we can make. Sure. So that's the idea behind it. Is everybody good with it? Question. You don't have to play if you don't want to. But... <laughs> we don't have to be tied to the projects that we already know about that were, quote, projects yeah. from the CWPP. They Correct. can be new ideas. Yeah, try to do new ideas. And it's anonymous too. Yes, so don't put your name on it. Don't put your name on it. Yeah, I'm thinking no limitation on resources or. Right, like it's, you don't want to include like a trip to the minute. Yeah, yeah. Be, like the next fire in the room meeting is still going to be here. It's not going to be on the moon. <laughs> yeah, so be a little bit realistic, but, but not so much that it's restricting the creativity. Um, if that makes sense, make it possible, even if it's not something you know we could do immediately. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know, coming when you first came to the council, many of you probably had ideas of, boy, I wish they could run it. I wish, I wish we could do this if we had more money or more people, right? This is the time to put it. If you want. Okay. When I see most people look up, then we'll start sort of doing it. 
And if you're not sure, you don't you don't have to put something there. Sometimes it's kind of hard. I mean, a lot of food, but. Those we still have those in Zoom land. We do have some still in Zoom land. I told them they can put their ideas in the chat if they'd like. Yeah. And yeah, and actually we could write them down on a card. Yeah. And pass it. Oops. Yeah, only you, yeah, you don't have to make it anonymous if you really want to put your name in there, but who knows what implicit bias is if you put it with an onion, right? So, make it anonymous. And sometimes it's easier to put down those crazy ideas if you remember that you can type to the all that person. So, we're going to fold them so and we don't read them? Yeah, just leave them like they are. All right, so everybody stand up. See, you get your stuff in two. I'm so nice. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start the timer now. Just walk around and hand your card to people and then get the card from them. Just go on exchange and you're not reading them. This is the light switch. Yep, you're just trading them around. <laughs> Oh, right. Oh, my God. Don't even look. You just, you just grab and say, Just not the Just straight one. No, he's training. 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 He's Okay, stop with the one you have. Read it. Go back to the end and read it. And be in the start of the top. Or be in the start of the top. Right? Okay. One to five. One is a, not a real one in Europe. Right? Five is not a real one. But yes, we're going to do this multiple times. So it's not like you were the sole judge. And put the rating on the other side of the car. So that whoever gets it next is not so normally divided by the rating. Yeah, the right way. <laughs> one to five is just there. One is there. On the opposite side. Do it on the side with the so right. Oh. Anything between there. One, two, three, four, or five. So it's a lighter scale. So everybody got it? You understand? I'm responding. I am a that. I'm taking that. I'm going to do it. I'm Thank you. 
If it is, it's going to put somebody up. Go ahead and just produce. It doesn't really matter what side the number's on. No. It is it involves we have a big one. Oh no, I Yeah. It's our Um so go ahead. I'm putting it will but now I'm not the total because we will then start rating, right? So it's not gonna have. So it's okay, we'll do we'll you may have to be yours from one time. How about Russ? Give it to Russ. Okay, Russ, right. give it to somebody else. All right, Andy, right. we're running out of time. Right, and uh, rate, uh, rate, uh, rate that one. Yeah. 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 No. Okay. We're going to stand up. We're going to do it one more time. Ready? Ready? Go. Hand off, hand off, hand off. Okay, stop looking at the one you have. Is it one that you have rated before? Or no. is it your own? Everybody's good? Okay, read it, rate it, and then write the total on the back. So add up the three numbers, there should be three numbers on your card. Add up the total on the back. <laughs> How many times have we done it? I think it's pretty certified. This is going to be a really nice burrito. Okay. okay. So, did anybody have a car with a 15 on it? Okay, no 15s. Anybody have a 14 on it? This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the idea is. <laughs> well, I don't know. All right, did you read it? Now remember, this is a great you don't know, and you can only have to wait to watch what the script says. Uh, it veers from the insurance company to come to the event to discuss the importance of home wildfire safety. Also, to address the app. That we get, that we get, and we do a group discussion about their insurance company seeing the information in SAM. Okay, so, so having insurance company come to an event that we're doing or have a discussion with insurance agents, local insurance agents. And, and talk about HIV or have them talk about HIV. Is that what it's the same? Huh? No, no. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Open discussion with insurance leaders. Because we always think that it has to be from the other. Yeah. Right. We'll send we did it before. All you guys can start and get done. Yeah. Really? So there are concerns even about the insurance company. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, and some of them are readily engaged. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. 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 So basically, it hasn't been done in a while. The insurance guy is coming. Yeah. He was very sure. So they use and what others might be able to do that would. Lower their rates or at least not raise. Yeah, if any. Yeah. 
I think that that is such a it's a good suggestion and maybe because we saw right our commissioner talking to the concern. Yeah. Are giving way back, right? Maybe part of why they didn't sign uh, the 2009 CWPP. So that is yeah, a lot of people if you vote if you do is that a yeah. program that public program that you can yeah. Okay, keep the cards. The whole collector cards at the end. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hey, cool. What do you guys think? I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Okay, I, I did do the research. Even with what registered with the state, the file of state, it does not have their how they're rating people. It has their either rates and their, their stuff like that. But you know, you know how how are they rating them? What 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 is out there using that? Yeah. Okay. So I will let you know what what little I know is generally they use the same law fire that state owned them do. They can care less about spam. They don't look at spam at all. They don't have access to spam. Um, but they will use anyway because they have a different algorithm algorithm and, and um, rating. What they do is there is a rating system, a general rating system that most of them go by. But each agency has a different rating level that they're that is their acceptability level, right? So some 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 agencies have like a rating of three. No, all right. Kristen, Pardon. we have six minutes left. Okay. So right, that's there is that, but the general public doesn't know that. Right. And to know what our, our agents are now here. That's what I the whole Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, <laughs> we're good. Are we only going to so talk about one idea? We're good. We're good. I'm okay. just trying to get. I I know, but we're good. We've got that parts. We're on thirteen. We're going to do twelve. Okay. And we're going to do eleven, and then I want to hear all three. Okay. Does anybody have a twelve? Yes. You want to read yours? Bring HIV, air quality, and wildfire. Um. A I think it's evacuation, prep, fields, mitigation, et cetera, into local high school curriculums, whether in biology classes, social sciences, or some other general ed classes that everyone takes. Cool. Okay. I've got a 12 here. Okay. Uh, block party downtown on Saturday for families with fire education activities, food vendors, bouncy house. Smoking, music, handouts, HIV assessment form, etc. I gave this a rating of five. Sweet. Let's turn it on. Blog part. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have beer? Having that bounce around town. Even though we're targeting families, uh -huh. this would be that generation. Because families can't usually come to meetings and stuff because they can't stay for blah, blah, blah. But if those block parties that they do downtown, you know, um, a lot of families are always looking for something easy and cheap to do on a weekend. Kids. Yeah. And you have like all those handouts and smoky and. Get me my block band. I got the beer. So we, we normally do about the top three. The, the local high school curriculum is kind of in with our CWDG grant. We have a whole curriculum package in there. So let's try one more. Does anybody have another 12 or an 11? Okay. And I have an 11. Okay. Thank you. We're using a box fan, stove with dryer vent, and um, barrel of water. And then it brings a particular out of the air to blow the air. The water question is about the levels, particularly. Oh, another type. Another uh, type. Hey, wow. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whose idea was that? That was All a right. good one. I have two minutes. One more 11. Okay. 11. 
Locate a home that needs mitigation on a small scale and invite the public to an actual day showing how to mitigate, how to do the mitigation, preferably an elderly homeowner. Sweet. Basically, HIC help. Yeah. You're giving something to help, but you're also showing how to do that mitigation and how to get it. Like, get a split of service club to do work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, that's a thing. And cool. high schools, natural, national honor societies have to have a certain amount of volunteer honor. That's how it's, yeah. All seniors yeah. in high school. Yeah. Whether they're national. Okay, so what I can get, actually, I'll just kind of collect a full clock, I'll grab them. Thank you for that. That was a good that. exercise. Then, how is that made out of the team? Then, part of the team. Yeah, they don't look here. Yeah. Because we're about education. Yeah, I'm trying to see. It's a new ball for us. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. With one minute to spare, yeah. my lord. Yeah. Did you ever beat me up? <laughs> He's got a strong right hook, so. And don't take the pen to my pocket. I'm going to go over it. I probably am. Just give me your time. Yeah, no. In the one minute we have left, does anybody have an idea for a presentation for next month? I think Steve Brown is going to wants to do one for August. On what? I don't know. But he wants to do one. Oh, Did, right. did he say something? I think so. He was planning yeah. on doing it this week, this is, meeting, and then pushed back to August. Yeah, so there must be new news on the Bitterroot front because he's done it before. Yes, I will double check. But if there's yeah. anyone else who's itching. OK. And then be thinking about other speakers for future meetings and send us an email with your ideas on that. Thank you. When's the next meeting? August 9th? On on the 6th. Time. August 6th. Oh, August 6th. Here. Oh, yeah. Still. Unless something changes. Yeah, we usually How put it on the bottom. How does everyone feel about this location? Any concerns? Uh, sound is like, it is very ugly. Yeah, we can we can organize the chairs. For sure. Be there, guys. Yeah, I agree. So, first, yeah. so I just yeah, yeah. yeah. so this is the right here. Yeah, so the middle is the yeah, maybe if we sat closer to the front, we wouldn't be echoing quite yeah. so much. There's a lot of empty space right here. Which, yeah, I don't know if it's a Yeah, I don't feel like it was. He was too far away. Yeah. Okay, thank you, folks. Yeah, no, I'll check the other thing. Yeah, no, I'll check the other thing. Thank you. Thank you, Zoomers. <laughs> I assume they're gone. Uh, if people want to write down some things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, the two places, I think you can call them, and they both have websites. They may be on the website, but they may need to tell you where on there. Right. One is Montana Party Time, and they're in Missoula. Yeah. I know uh, for lots of events, they will actually deliver. Up. It'll cost Thank more. You. Right. Or you can Thank go pick you. it up, depending on what you get. They do like glassware and silverware and 